When you're in a street fight with a drunk stranger over whether a certain player sucks or not, why waste your energy listing an entire spreadsheet of stats when there's one you can use to tell the whole story? As you're dodging hastily thrown, beer-encrusted fists, hit him with the sucker punch of knowledge using Wins Above Replacement. Wins Above Replacement, or Wars I'm going to call it, is the amount of extra wins a player contributes in a season versus a replacement level scrub. Replacement is typically thought to refer to an AHL call-up or league minimum NHLer. In this video, I'm going to talk about war from a conceptual standpoint. If you want to see the full scale of the math behind it, feel free to check out the link I provide in the description. You might not make it back alive. War is basically a Frankenstein monster of stats from on-ice events. The categories that influence war directly include shot quality, shooting rate, penalties, zone transitions, and for goalies, goal prevention. Shot quality can be broken down further into high, low, and medium danger shots based on this chart. The more a player takes high danger shots, the better chance he has to score in those shots, which results in more goals and more wins. This also applies on the defensive end. A player who takes an exceptional amount of high danger shots, but also gives up the same amount will not be blessed by the gods of war. Shooting rate is influenced by Corsi and Fenwick, which are the possession stats that compare shot attempts for and against when a player is on the ice. You'll notice a similar logic here. More shots for, more expected goals, more actual goals, and more winning. War also considers a player's penalties drawn and taken, which often get overlooked, but can be a serious factor on whether a team wins or loses. Tom Wilson also has a Stanley Cup, so what do I know? Next up is zone transitions, which assess how a player typically enters the offensive zone and defends an opposing player entering the offensive zone. Dumpins are bad news for creating shots, and that's regardless of whether the dumpin was for a line change or not. Unfortunately for him and his war, Yori Laterra loves dumpins because he knows a thing or two about line changes. On the other end are carry-ins, which are statistically about twice as effective at creating shots as dump and chase hockey. Finally, giving the goalie some love, their war depends on the reverse of what I mentioned previously. The severity of a goal allowed to war is a product of total prior shots faced, the quality of the shot, and whether that shot was taken at even strength or on the power play. Now, if you look carefully at the structure of categories and subcategories within war, you'll see something pretty spooky. You can clearly see that it forms the shape of a triangle. And with that, I've just met my quota of forced Illuminati jokes. War does account for details such as home ice advantage, strength of the opponent, game script, and zone starts. The standard for replacement level, or zero war, is based on years of historical data and is fluid as long as people are still being paid league minimum in the NHL. I should mention that there are other catch-all stats that preceded war, namely goals versus threshold and point shares, though I think war is the most complete model to date. I'll leave a link to both GVT and point shares in the description. Anyway, this is the Armchair Analyst signing off and hoping you enjoyed this replacement level overview. Mm -hmm.